это процесс создания нового. Every discovery creates the foundation for new inventions. Today, the evolution of technologies has brought us together at the AIJ for a journey in the world of artificial intelligence, the land of opportunities. Hello, my name is Anastasia Chernobrovina and it is my great pleasure to welcome you at the International Conference on AI and Data Analysis, which is called Artificial Intelligence Journey 2022. This is the journey in the world of artificial intelligence in the next few days. We are going to discuss AI with the renowned experts from Russia and abroad uh, and all the experts and the representatives of the businesses uh, that uh, advocate for the AI. We live in the world where technologies are ubiquitous and they are interwoven with the progress. Last year, AI became the largest AI conference in the world in terms of number of registrations. 250 renowned international experts and Russian experts participated, and uh, people from 35 countries participated in the event. More than 50 million views uh, for the uh, opening of the conference. I would like to invite the aide to the president of the Russian Federation, Maxim Oreshkin, and the first deputy chairman of uh, Sberbank, Alexander Vityakin. Good morning. It is my great pleasure to again open uh, the uh, AI journey that has the uh, that gathers and hosts the best renowned experts on AI. It proves that AI is very important and high on the agenda for the scientific and business community as well as for the government community and to the authorities. Understanding the importance of AI for the welfare of our citizens and ensuring the sovereignty of our country, the president of Russia last year uh, signed a decree to develop AI in Russia. Uh, this uh, decree supported the development of AI on all stages, uh, from research and um, uh, expert development and talent development to the uh, expert and uh, industry regulation. A lot has been done, but now we need to move from the one-off cases to the large-scale implementation across the economy and industries and manufacturing. We have all uh, we need, uh, the technology solutions, the talents, and uh, tens of thousands of Russians who decided to do this as a job. Uh, for the next decade, AI can deliver major benefits for the people of our country, ensure the better salaries thanks to the automation and uh, of the business processes, making the solutions better, creation of new materials, improving the lifespan by an additional three years thanks to the early diagnosis uh, th that are going, the diagnosis that is going to be better as well and developing a new treatment programs, improving human capital thanks to the uh, better education uh, trajectories, uh, building better education trajectories to achieve these goals. We need to work actively and diligently and com in a committed way. I'm confident that uh, the AI journey uh, with the participation of the President of Russia is going to uh, continue to be one of the key venues that will support the development of AI in Russia. Hi everyone, Maxim, thank you very much. We are living in the era of the uh, rapid development of technologies and AI is uh, one of the fastest growing technology. AI is um, basically the main technology of the 21st century. Recommendation services, uh, search engines and all the other things are parts of our lives and they are based on AI.
What is the next stage? We think that uh, we need to move to AGI, the strong artificial intelligence. It will uh, be able to resolve many tasks, uh, um, work in uncertainty, and will be an even better assistant for the society and for the businesses. We are seeing uh, that the parameters of the neural networks are growing very quickly, and the creation of M3 models is emerging, multi-model, multi-tasking, and multi-language-based uh, systems so they can work with different types of information with stacks with the audio at the same time. Multitasking means that it can resolve different tasks and multi-language support uh, helps uh, it to work on different languages. So when, uh, today we're going to um, discover the achievements with the world-renowned experts in this area. As Mr. Reshkin said, it is uh, the seventh conference, annual conference, and uh, the scale has become much larger during this time. Uh, we have uh, the best top-notch experts in this area, and we are happy that the number of these experts is continuing to grow. The program is going to be very tight and very uh, interesting, um, more than 50. We expect uh, the conference to be viewed by more than 50 million people. Uh, uh, Qatar, Brazil, Venezuela, India. Uh, United Arab Emirates and many other countries are viewing this conference. We put an ambitious uh, goal to make AI journey one of the best and the leading uh, scientific conference in AI. AI journey science, that's our new track where we're going to discuss the latest development in AI. That's the first year that we're doing that. We are proud of our young talents that uh, are creating already in their age, creating the great AI solutions, and this is why we're going to have our traditional uh, school and university student track and competition. We hope that this will be a showcase for all the other young people and they will be drawn into the world of AI. Another important topic is the ethical development of technologies. Last year we made a major step forward by creating a special ethics code in AI, and this year we were able to achieve great results. The code was joined by more than 100 participants. At the end of the day, we're going to sum up uh, the results of our AI journey contest. That's an international contest, and we are happy that more and more participants are joining the contest, and uh, they are actually resolving important tasks on the edge, on the cutting edge of the science, and they are developing AI for the improvement of the lives of the society. Fusion brain, that's the major task for the contest, uh, this, the creation of the AGI. And the participants had to know the most relevant uh, methods uh, to develop this AGI solution, the strong art AI solution. So let's open the uh, our day and our conference and welcome to AI Journey, the journey into the world of the artificial intelligence 2022. Mr. Oreshkin, Mr. Vidakin, thank you so much for such a great introduction. We are continuing. I'd like to tell you what we have. Uh, workshops, reports, presentations, master classes, the interactive uh, classes for the students. You can select whatever you need, whatever you like, but uh, rest assured, every stream is going to provide you with the m most relevant trends and innovations in AI and ML. And right now, I am inviting you to the world of artificial intelligence. And I would like to tell you that we're going to connect with the excellent centers uh, that are working on my eyes. Uh, we are connecting with them through the video conference and calls. And I'm going to give the floor to Alexander Vidyakin, the first deputy chairman of Sberbank, who is going to host uh, this um, um, uh, meeting. Thank you, Anastasia. Hi everyone again. So we have just opened the first day of the conference and traditionally it discusses the most relevant issues and the we're going to discuss uh, how AI is going to resolve global challenges uh, with AI. 17 uh, goals of sustainable development uh, was established by the UN, uh, working uh, on climate, uh, creating on smart Swiss cities, and creation of the infrastructure for innovations and other goals were included. This is the 
plan for the development of our civilization as a whole, and there are major challenges, uh, according to the UN, in the last 30 years, the planet lost more than 420 million hectares of trees every decade. Uh, the Arctic ice is uh, decreasing by 1 million uh, uh, square kilometers. 19 centimeters, uh, uh, that was the raise of the sea level in the last several decades. 8 billion people by 2024, that was the forecast of the UN, but you know that we were able to achieve this figure much quicker in November this year. We got this new, we went through this important benchmark, and we need to move faster, therefore, and we need global tools for resolving global challenges. One of these tools for that is the AI. Um, on G20 work, the uh, Sustainable Development Goals, uh, for that, uh, they are recommended to create excellent centers in different parts of the world. Uh, in Russia, these centers have been created. Uh, regions uh, of Russia are using AI more and more actively to resolve uh, the uh, challenges that they face. Burr is actively participating in that. This autumn, together with the uh, Far Eastern uh, Technology University, we have opened an excellent center uh, on AI. It works with uh, uh, the environmental issues uh, on a global scale, by the way. And uh, today we're going to connect with the Russian ex Excellence Centers for the Development of AI. And we're going to talk about AI applications for the achievement of uh, the SDGs. Alexei Chekhunkov, the Minister of Russian Federation for the Development of Arctic and Far Eastern Region, Vyacheslav Malenkov, uh, the Deputy uh, um, um, Minister of the Government of the uh, Sakhalin uh, Region, uh, Mr. Korobet, uh, the uh, acting uh, head of the Far Eastern University, Alexander Kuleshov, the head of the Skolko um, School of Technology, called Skoltech, Mikhail Fidaruk, the uh, rector of Novosibirsk State University, and Eduard Golozhinsky, the rector of the Tomsk State University, and Alexander Tarmasov, uh, the uh, rector of Innopolis uh, University. We are also going to be joined uh, with Kandinsky Neural Network, that's an AI solution, and it is going to show us with what images uh, uh, this or that issue, um, uh, how can you describe this or that issue with an image? Now, the first question. We know that on the uh, Far Eastern region, uh, the uh, most advanced technologies are being developed. We look at the uh, protected uh, forest areas. We see hackathons for the students and for the school children. Uh, three Far Eastern regions uh, have become leaders in terms of the digitization. Yakutsk was one of them, by the way, and I know that you are there in Yakutsk, um, a city that with quite cold weather and quite far away from Moscow. Uh, now, the Sustainable Development Goals are being achieved by uh, many, but actually the Far Eastern region is 40, 7 million square kilometers, 40 percent of our country. That's a lot. The, it can be compared with entire continents developing technologies in companies or in one megapolis or in one urban center is one thing, and developing AI in on a continental scale, that's a total different issue. Uh, can, can you tell us what are the real possibilities and what are the goals and targets for implementing AI in the Far Eastern and Arctic regions of Russia? Mr. Vidyakin, friends, hello from our sunny city of Yakutsk. And maybe those who don't know about AI, they would think that maybe AI in Yakutsk is not really the topic that, you know, comes to mind first. But I'm confident that everyone knows that Yakutia is, Yakutsk region is one of the leaders in terms of the implementation of uh, uh, information technologies and including AI. And here we face and we use several systems, uh, large scale systems, huge systems that need analysis of big data and, uh, that is done by neural networks uh, to be able to, you know, drive the economy on this region. 
Unfortunately, last season Yakuti, uh, Yakutsk region had a big problem uh, with uh, forest fires, and we have implemented uh, the system which is called uh, East Forest, Eastern Forest. It is going to be uh, rolled out for the, all the forests in Russia. To analyze, it will analyze the satellite images and it will use the networks to analyze the forest systems. If uh, uh, the, there is a spread of disease, if uh, the wood, uh, the forests are cut uh, illegally, and of course if uh, there's fire, uh, neural networks are used in other systems, uh, like in transportation uh, networks. We analyze uh, the ice uh, situation uh, for our sea transportation uh, facilities. This is a very complex system, and we use AI very actively to uh, forecast the ice. Uh, um, the thickness, uh, soft plot, Ross Atom uh, are one of the leaders in applying these technologies. Now, we have just faced uh, one of the, uh, we have just uh, built uh, one of the largest cardio centers with uh, AI. We have some special programs for the development of uh, Far Eastern region. We have some very promising startups, including in uh, uh, healthcare and in um, uh, medical analysis. Siberia company is using AI to um, analyze uh, computer tomography and MRI and other scans, and uh, it scans it with AI. Uh, rolled out, starting to roll it out across Russia. Uh, it is supported by the investments of Inter Ross uh, by Mr. Patanin and uh, together with the CEO of Inter Rossa, Sergei Patekin, we uh, were at this startup and after that we, we visited the startup and we invested there and in August already we were uh, reporting to the Prime Minister of Russia in terms of this development. Now, Far Eastern region is uh, the place where Russia meets uh, the uh, Asian Pacific region. Asia Pacific region is the most important uh, ocean of data, so to speak. It is uh, the largest uh, population and the largest number of gadgets and electronic devices and these, uh, you know, uh, data points uh, that are used uh, to um, build uh, the artificial intelligence and uh, therefore we strive to make sure that uh, the centers like that, uh, the Yakutsk University, the Banford and all the other universities. We need to make sure that they are not only the excellent centers for the Russian uh, implementation of AI, but we also need to partner them to be the centers to partner with uh, the um, uh, Asia Pacific um, uh, countries uh, to develop AI. And I think it's very important uh, to include uh, Far Eastern, um, uh, the uh, people living in Far Eastern region. Um, to, to raise awareness in terms of AI uh, among the population. We're going to make a special AI day in the schools in the Far Eastern region. Now, there will be a lesson for the school kids uh, that will talk about the AI, AI applications and uh, how it improves the lives of the people. Thank you for your attention. I wish you all the luck and success for the conference. Alexei, thank you so much for that. It is true that it is absolutely crucial what you're doing in the Far Eastern region in terms of developing the AI. And uh, I remember back when uh, talking to you about this, uh, and we actually visited your region, and we were quite amazed by what you have been doing there. This is awesome. This is this, this, this makes me so happy. And at Spur, we are going to help you in any way we can to develop develop this technology in the Far East, wherever your ministry is working. Thank you so much. I wish you the best of luck. 
I have now a question for Vyacheslav Alenkov. One of the goals of in sustainable development is uh, the goal of combating climate change. Carbon neutrality in your region, uh, the ambitious goal there, one of the most ambitious goals actually in the world, region-wise, and even if we compare your region to other states, the unique flora and fauna of the Sakhalin region are going to change dramatically, even if the global temperature rises by as much as two uh, degrees centigrade. I know that you have been actively implementing AI, and I know that you have been have been experimenting with AI. So the question for you is, artificial intelligence can help make Sakhalin a truly digital island. What do you think would be the benefit of that for your citizens? Mr. Vidahian, dear colleagues, hello. It is true that sustainable development for us uh, is, is not just words. We do have our sustainability agenda. We want to build a sustainable and efficient system of governance in the region. We want to create a comfortable environment for citizens. Just a couple of examples from practice. Ecology, for example, liquidation of uh, non-sanctioned, non-licensed landfills. We have been using drones to identify landfills of that kind. We have created a digital map of such landfills, and uh, we are trying to get rid of them. So we are talking about areas uh, of waste management that are beyond any licenses or permits. And uh, we have also been using AI in uh, prospecting exercises. Also, with uh, infrastructure in, in, in cities, uh, dust, snow, precipitations, once again, we have been creating a digital map with the relevant governance con control mechanisms. We managed to clean the streets uh, from any snow or, or rain so quickly that the very next day you can uh, go ahead and ride your bike to commute to work. And uh, we have developed standards for cleaning the streets from dust, from snow, and we have managed to decrease by a factor of five the amount of dust on our streets. Same with the landfills. We have been benefiting from AI for identifying for targeted fixation of problem areas. We have a special vehicle moving around the city with modern controls, accumulating data with AI on board to identify problem areas and to redistribute resources to, to fight any problems in, in the urban environment. Once again, AI has been very helpful in these endeavors. We've also been leveraging AI to improve uh, the, the design in our city. As you rightly mentioned, we have a pretty extensive sustainability agenda in the region, and we have uh, quite an area for maneuvering in uh, using AI, for example, with uh, greenhouse gas emissions. We could reduce uh, the emissions of such gases thanks to reduction of traffic. So one of the main goals for us is to create the right routes and infrastructure. We could do it in real time, provided we have the right uh, data and information. This will have economic benefits and this will also reduce harmful emissions and our negative impact on the environment. This year, we have another sustainability goal. We want to fully transition to data-driven governance in the region. We have uh, the school for that. We have the standards for that, uh, the standards that specify which uh, decisions should be made, which policies should be adhered to in the process. I've already given you a few examples of how we've been using AI, and starting next year, we hope to see hundreds and hundreds of practical use cases of where we benefit from AI and improve living in our city for people. Thank you, Vyacheslav. It's great to hear that uh, government officials uh, have been learning more about artificial intelligence, using it for practical purposes. Will you be able to do the programming, or will you just be doing the goal setting? I think uh, I think we will start programming at some point. Uh, we have five elements in our guidelines, in our agenda, so we hope to reach uh, step three very soon, related to decision-making and governance controls. Uh, we have been 
making quite a lot of progress in that. One more question for you. What problems do you see? What are the main challenges, the main barriers for the Sakhalin region to become a truly digital region? Is it a lack of data? Is it talent shortage? What do you think it is? Because we have been in a dialogue with many regions about it, and this is quite a sore spot. Well, based on statistics, we have been consistently in the top 10 of Russian regions by digitization. So we we are pretty digitized and we have a lot of colleagues. We welcome a lot of colleagues from other regions uh, to share our experience in digitization. But I think we could do better. The first challenge is, of course, the shortage of, of talent, as you said, and uh, the lack of uh, culture, the, the, the decision-making culture, decision-making based on data, I mean. I'm, I'm talking about regional governance, uh, municipal administration. I'm talking about the ability to use data to make a decision. And once they can do that, once they learn to do that, we will know that we are truly digital. Uh, and not just a region that implements different systems here and there arbitrarily a region where digitization is concentrated in the Ministry of Digital Development. Thank you very much, Vecislav. I am being shown this image. I hope you can see it too. Climate change in Sakhalin. This looks very flowery. Well, this is the take of the neural network on Sakhalin, on its development. It's interesting how artificial intelligence sees climate change. Okay, moving on. The next question is for Boris Korobets. One of uh, the SDGs is about preserving aquatic sea flora and fauna. More than 3 billion people depend on it. The ocean contains billions and billions of uh, species. The preservation of uh, sea ecosystems is particularly relevant these days because uh, for your region, uh, for Primoria region, because uh, your border is largely a sea border. And there are a lot of problems that can be solved with AI. So a question for you, Boris. I know that you have been putting into practice a lot of uh, interesting AI research, and such research is a great opportunity for you to partner up with uh, universities and, and counterparties from abroad. So what do you think we could do to scale up your endeavors to, well, the world? Hello, Alexander. Hello, colleagues. Uh, it's a great pleasure for me to be speaking here at the conference. As you probably know, we have very recently opened this uh, Far Eastern Center for AI Research, supported by Mr. Graf and uh, you, Mr. Vedekin. That is quite an achievement for us, quite a milestone. It's great to see that in the Far Eastern region at our university we have our own AI Research Center. This is a very tall task, environmental task, and uh, you very rightly mentioned SDGs that are pertinent not just for the Far Eastern region and uh, also for Kamchatka, given the natural disaster that we had to deal with uh, a couple of years ago, and uh, the entire Asian Pacific region, to be honest. The work that we are doing at the Far Eastern University and at the AI Center is, uh, is quite extensive. AI regulation, the, the relevant legislation, practical use cases. One of the challenges that we're dealing with is this, this problem, this very high-profile problem. Unfortunately, it's, it, it still it persists, the so-called red ties that we had uh, back in 2020 in Kamchatka. This is related to the, the life of uh, these plankton organisms in sea. So predicting the probability and the localization of such red ties could only be done with AI. Previously, we had to do it uh, just by guessing, really. But these days, thanks to AI, we can be very accurate 
accurate, very precise in our forecasting. So, so thanks to the uh, help of uh, Sperbank, thanks to the data and the work done by our colleagues at the university related to such red ties, now we can indeed predict when and where uh, the micro algae, the plankton, will be flourishing, because that could result in damage for the regions and uh, for the whole industry um, of uh, the whole industry that depends on, on, on the sea. We have been working very closely with the Asbury Iron Lab. So now we can identify the, the starting, the start of the flourishing period, and we can also assess the state of the environment, the environment where there is a high likelihood that the algae will start developing and, and, and flourishing. And so I hope that we will be able to avoid such disasters in the future. And another problem that is very pertinent for the Asian Pacific regions is uh, predicting tropical cyclones. The corresponding monitoring, the tracing of uh, those cyclones. This is a very relevant problem for, for our Asian counterparts because we have been hearing now and again the, the damage done by such cyclones and learning how to forecast them accurately is uh, absolutely essential. This is uh, the challenge that we are dealing with and uh, I think we have made a lot of progress towards solving it. We have learned to identify the emergence of a cyclone thanks to the Japanese counterparts, uh, Jamaris and Electro, the Russian satellites. So now we can do the identification and prediction quite well. We have been exchanging data with Spur and in October uh, we started training the AI model and we hope we will do even better with uh, predicting the cyclone data. By the end of 2022, together with Spare, we are hoping to finalize this, this project and uh, from then on we will be able to do the predictions very, very accurately. I think the export potential is very high. There is a lot of interest already even though this uh, project is still in development. And of course, healthcare, another aspect, another challenge, very pertinent for the Far East, a lot of projects, uh, false limbs, Parkinson's disease, uh, I could talk for hours about it. It's, it's a very interesting, a, a top priority area for us. And I know that together with Spare, we will, uh, we will solve these problems. Thank you, Boris. Uh, we have been helping your region and we will do so in the future. There are a lot of projects that we are working on together. I I love this project with the tigers um, that we are saving, that we are preserving. It's, it's great that we now have uh, the, the, the tool to uh, optimize the fishing for Wally Pollock a very important species. So a lot of projects around the Far Eastern region and uh, the Ministry has been quite a lot of help. A great advantage, I think, is that you are close to, well, very, very close to China and the Chinese researchers and scientists. I think uh, for them it would take uh, way less time to, to get to you, to Vladivostok, than to, say, Moscow, for example. So I think the scientists who are now working in, in other countries abroad, they, they could team up with the Chinese scientists and the Chinese scientists could um, maybe uh, work on, uh, co collaborate with, uh, with you. Alexander Kuleshov, a question for you. The sustainability agenda means that the progress should not be to the detriment of uh, the environment, and AI is no exception. Skoltech is working at the junction of uh, AI and ESG, and you specifically, you focus a lot on increasing the efficiency of uh, computing, calculations, and AI. As we know, AI 
uh, emits a lot of CO2 during its uh, computational operations. That is a big problem. Thanks to the work that you are doing in particular, you could reduce such uh, CO2 emissions uh, from AI and ML. So the question for you is as follows. Artificial intelligence can become even more green, even more environmentally friendly. Do you, do you agree with that? Do you think it's right to say that? I absolutely agree. In order to make AI truly environmentally friendly, we need very good math. At Skoltech, we have 350 people working in AI. Just uh, by way of example, last year, well, annually, we have 23 to 25 papers published in this area, and uh, many of you probably know that. Mr. Vidakin already started talking about this, uh, so AI and ESG. The ESG topic this year, it, it got a little bit to the background, I would say. Last year, we saw ESG as um, uh, carbon credits, uh, carbon neutrality, quotes, penalties, etc. But for our country, that is probably not that relevant at the moment, so carbon quotes, carbon credits uh, persist. They are still very much on the agenda, but at the moment, for our country, for Russia, we see the, the, the grave danger of uh, climate change, environmental issues, fire, um, forest fires, for example. There's recently been this uh, decree by Mr. Chernyshenko, and uh, we've signed this agreement together with the Emergency Ministry on uh, predicting forest fires. We've decided to, to test um, our tools. As you probably know, that fire fires, unfortunately, are not just uh, a, a Russia problem, uh, California, Portugal, Albania, Albania, Greece. So we have uh, done this tool for predicting fire fires for Albania and Greece. And what are the results? Geometrically speaking, the outcome was 92%. 92% accuracy with identifying the correct vector of uh, spreading. So the results are good, so good as to say that in practice they could be very much uh, brought to fruition, they could be very much used effectively. And this uh, relates not just to firefighters. You could look it up online. Uh, you could look up how many tall buildings, uh, blocks of flats in the regions affected by firefighters have been um, demolished, have been damaged. There's nuclear plants, uh, there could be nuclear plants nearby, such as the Belibinska plant, for example. There are underlying principles for existing tools. Uh, existing policies, uh, the, the government agencies have been using them, but they are not as precise, they're not as accurate without using artificial intelligence methods and uh, classic algorithms based on first principles. Nothing can be done, really, nothing meaningful. We have mentioned the North Sea route and, and uh, forest fires. We have learned uh, empirically, that correct work with data yields a lot of uh, significant results. Mr. Vedekin started this uh, conversation with increasing energy efficiency of AI. And this is a very important topic. We have in, in, in tight collaboration with SPAN, not just in that area. We have been very much relying on them because the, the biggest cluster in Russia, way ahead of um, all its competition, is uh, Christafari's supercomputer. And so this partnership with Spare is incredibly important for us. We've managed to bring down 15 percent. Well, I will not delve into details about the, the exact metrics, 
we are going to uh, bring this reduction by 50 percent, the, I mean, the power consumption. And this, this can be done. This is very realistic. We know how to do it. All we need is good, solid math. Uh, we're not guided by any illusions, you see. Uh, this is artificial intelligence, algebra, tensor, calculations, so robust math, which we should be leveraging. But if we, if we go back to the environment, the, the ecology, it is obvious that without artificial intelligence, without ML, without combinations of AI and ML with uh, traditional classical methods used by monitoring agencies, nothing can be done. And the uh, promises, th there's a great promise in that. Yeah, thank you very much for that input. We are working together, Skoltech, and you personally are um, inspiring us, and you being an ambassador of AI and its implementation. Now, an additional question related to the uh, talents. You had a, uh, in, in Russian newspaper, you had uh, a um, an interesting interview that got a lot of attention, and you were discussing talents there, and we have been talking about that. We hope that the model will be the, the following that uh, the Chinese will go to Vladivostok uh, as for the Far Eastern regions. But what about our uh, our regions? Uh, how it will be built? Uh, what, what will be the situation with the international uh, lecturers? Well, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but the Chinese will not go, actually. They will go to other countries, to other centers because we uh, sent some people for four months there, but, you know, there the professor salaries, the professor in AI salaries start with the $500,000. How can you compete with that? I mean, obviously you have to have, have homegrown experts. We have, what, 150 uh, people in AI that want to study AI per year, and that's a, we have a competition of 70 uh, 70 students per one seat, and how do you grow them? I mean, we do ha have a lot of talented youth, but we, we need to work with that. And I'm going to go back to Zbur. We started with contracts, and that was a good idea, actually. Then we, you know, decided to unite teams. Maybe we'll be able to unite in an administrative way, and that's a very important thing, because I'm confident that by merging with uh, large uh, corporations, by using their uh, resources, we'll be able to retain the people. There are no other options. You, you should not build illusions. Uh, Chinese will not come to our country. I mean, why would they? Yeah, I do agree. As Burr and uh, Yandex and other corporations are uh, investing in that. Yandex is not a state corporation, but still they're pretty active. And uh, Chinese and Americans, well, yeah, when large corporations invest money, you know, uh, the experts, they do stay and they, they drive the science. Well, we're going to discuss that on our main uh, panel discussion uh, that uh, is going to start at 1 p.m. tomorrow. Uh, next uh, question uh, is to Mikhail. Uh, one of the uh, SDGs uh, means that uh, the welfare and lifespan of people will increase. The Novosibirsk State University is one of the largest scientific centers in Russia now. We know that we are actually working on the development of AI and first of all in healthcare. Now, the initiatives in this area can save the lives of millions of Russians and um, for instance in Russia uh, uh, almost four million people are uh, being um, tested, are being uh, registered and the oncology centers and um, uh, the early detection of cancer helps uh, to improve uh, the lifespan dramatically. Uh, so, Mikhail, what do you think? Uh, will AI help us to uh, increase the lifespan of the people? Thank you very much for that, Mr. Vidyakin. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone. It's morning in Moscow, it's evening in Vladivostok, here in Russia is quite big, you know. So, the um, AI developments emerged in the Novosibirsk academic city uh, from its launch, from the launch of the city, from the launch of the university. 
Uh, we made great contributions in uh, the development of theory of AI. Zhuravlov, uh, Yershov, Goncharov, Zagarbulka, all of these academicians made a great contribution in the development of the theory of AI. I'd like to say that currently uh, the AI developments are being supported by around 30% of the, our university and six uh, faculties in, and the physics and mathematics school uh, under our university. And we have uh, specializ specialized departments uh, specializing in uh, deep learning and ML, uh, creating uh, the kind of a core team uh, in AI in, among the students and uh, teachers. Professors is one of our uh, top priority. Um, uh, items on the agenda. I would like to say that Zbur is one of the centers that attracts these experts and uh, we use AI with the uh, synthesis, um, AI synthesis, uh, synthesis in, in terms of AI. It is a kind of a combined uh, approach to development of AI that will help to improve, to create AGI as for the program uh, of our university, we obviously um, tailor it for uh, the large technology partners, uh, the uh, instruments, uh, the, the tools uh, based on the deep neural networks, ML, our specializations, and the president of Russia uh, mentioned the use of the neural network technologies uh, for uh, deciphering uh, Tibetan um, manuscripts. Uh, the uh, AI was used for that. Predictive analytics uh, and other AI tools are used for that. Creation of a technology uh, processes on life photonics that has been uh, developed in the university quite actively. The prog um, uh, prognosis in the economy, the cybersecurity, uh, looking at the graphs and uh, using AI, um, industrial autonomous uh, robotics, robotized uh, intellectual systems uh, for uh, the disabled people. But I would like to, uh, many other technologies. But I would like to talk about uh, the smart assistants for the doctors. Uh, you know, in line with the question that you have posed uh, in the lab, uh, in our ML lab, we uh, have developed an AI technology that helps to draw the contours of the different uh, types of uh, the uh, tumors in the, the brain for the M on the MRI scans that helps uh, the uh, surgeons to remove the tumor and uh, to uh, look at the areas that have to be radiated to remove the tumor. The we uh, find the boundaries of the tumor and the uh, AI solution makes it with a higher precision than, than humans by a factor of, by, by several fold and the architecture of the algorithm and the training of the algorithm showed great quality when tested and showed great um, resilience in terms of the uh, protection from the noise and uh, we have sustainable answers 92-95% in terms of the diagnostics of the tumor as for the MRI uh, scans uh, for the four major types of uh, tumors of the brain for the patients uh, that were in the sample uh, the, that, that was the improvement rate 92-95 percent I mean accuracy rate and we can use AI for the clinical approbation and the implementation in the uh, hospitals uh, and uh, the neural uh, the uh, the hospitals that uh, um, mostly treat the brain related problems we are ready to open an AI Excellence Center together with Spur, and uh, the uh, official letter was signed uh, by me and sent to Mr. Grav, the CEO of Spur. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much for that input. Uh, Novosibirsk is a great city with a huge and uh, very diverse and dynamic, vibrant uh, scientific school. The photonics that you have mentioned is something that is of great interest, I think, because I 
believe that one of the major challenges that AI faces right now is everything related to, to compute. I mean, compute capacity, obviously there are some limitations and the new opportunities that are being opened before us, like in neuromorphic chips and photonics. And you can talk about the quants in this way or another. Uh, but anyway, uh, you know, we have discussed that with Skulltech, uh, and we can discuss it with you as well. We're ready for the cooperation, and uh, tomorrow on the main panel, we're going to discuss that as well, because the AI without hardware, there's no AI really. I mean, uh, can you say that photonics is hardware? Well, maybe in a way. But uh, anyway, thanks a lot. Uh, moving next, uh, next question to uh, Eduard. Eduard, one of the goals of sustainable development is related to uh, preserving the ecosystems of uh, uh, the land ecosystem. 80% of all uh, insects and animals live in the forest. And according to experts, uh, at the same time, uh, the forests are being lost quicker than they're being restored, and we can restore it. Eduard, will AI help us to save uh, our Siberian forests and these fires uh, that the minister was talking about and uh, that we all know about because of, the, uh, because of the news, obviously, I and mean, how are we going to face that challenge with AI? Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Rajakin. Uh, Hi everyone, together with Burbank we are addressing uh, this uh, challenge. I would like to thank uh, the um, uh, Siberian University and you for, uh, for the creation of the AI Excellence Center uh, in uh, the Siberian region. This center is focusing on the socially important um, uh, challenges uh, for the uh, Siberian region and uh, these challenges are in our priority list and we are investing quite a lot uh, to develop along these lines. Uh, the first um, answer is related to your question, by the way. We're talking about the forecasting of the fires, uh, the forest fires, and we have created the models and the algorithms um, and the technologies, um, uh, computer vision uh, for the sat nav images, uh, scans, uh, using the predictive analytics uh, to forecast uh, the uh, uh, developments uh, in the forests. Uh, and AI helped uh, to decrease uh, the number of cases of forest fires um, manifold. And, uh, it's been monitored online. Uh, one of the uh, big swamps uh, that we have in Siberia, it's again, it is a huge uh, uh, nature collider, whole ecosystem. It's a kind of a uh, cooling system, really. And at the same time, it's one of the largest uh, turf swamp that uh, can, if dried, um, catch fire and uh, that would mean a, a lot of CO2 emissions and that would uh, be a, a catastrophe that would be on a, a global scale and uh, therefore researching this, uh, this ecosystem and s searching for the tools now that are based uh, on the current um, uh, tools, the technology tools that we have is a strategic task to save uh, the lives, the life on the planet. And another top priority are the social um, aspects of uh, AI implementation because we understand uh, that um, in line with the new industrial revolution, the uh, the application of uh, the technologies uh, is done much quicker than understanding the consequences of the such applications. Uh, and together with this excellent center, we are working on the legal and ethical uh, things related to that, uh, together with the university and um, uh, together with uh, the uh, civil organizations of Novosibirsk. We have uh, joined uh, the uh, ethics, AI ethics code developed by Sbir, because without that serious foundation, uh, it may lead to major skews in terms of the uh, sustainable development, uh, you know, the AI applications. Thank you very much uh, for giving me the word. Thank you very much for that insights. And uh, it's great that you talked about the ethics because the ethics of AI, you know, this is great. And it's great that in Tomsk, uh, the uh, universities signed uh, this uh, ethics code because our students who work, who, who study AI, they sh must understand that AI should follow the 
orders of uh, humans and follow the principles that humans put into it because AI is first of all an assistant and it should meet uh, the proper ethical principles. And it's great that you are uh, moving ahead in terms of the turf swamps. I remember it was a major problem in Moscow in 2010. Everything oh, there was on fire and all, 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 the, all Moscow was in smoke. It was impossible to breathe and yeah. I do agree uh, with the ethics, by the way. Uh, the rectors of the leading universities in the Siberian region are following that because ethical criteria uh, should be implemented in the education process because on the current stage of the development of the civilization, the ethics is uh, becoming a cornerstone of the uh, of our history, of the history of our civilization, and it should pave the way for the further development of technologies. Yes, absolutely. And as for the ethics, we have interesting statistics. Uh, Russia in, in one year, Actually, tomorrow we are going to have uh, uh, have new organizations joining the ethics code, and we will have uh, by the end of the conference we'll have more than 120 participants of the uh, code of ethics in AI. Uh, they will join these codes, and actually, if you look on Russia, uh, Russia is the leader in this area. And it is great. Uh, we are one of the leaders in terms of AI development, and uh, therefore uh, AI ethics is one of the topics that we drive. And actually, you know, uh, uh, but it's all the participants are always talking about Zber. Zber is everywhere. But you know, it's really, really kind of um, unfair because I know that uh, yes, we work a lot together. But I know that VK, Yandex, Rosatom, and many other corporations are making great contributions in AI development and they invest a lot in AI. They drive the AI and one of uh, the venues uh, for AI development is a university city which is called Innopolis and this is an, our other partner, uh, Alexander. And the question for you, one of the goals of the sustainable development is uh, the creation of, uh, the, of a safe and secure and environmentally friendly cities. Uh, this uh, agenda is going higher on the agenda. By 2030, there will be more than 5 billion people living uh, in urban centers. So the majority of the population of the Earth will uh, live in huge urban centers. Innopolis is... Uh, um, studying uh, AI, uh, ESG, and uh, driverless transport. As far as I remember, on the it is in in the police uh, that uh, first saw the uh, driverless Yandex taxi cars, uh, and uh, then uh, this uh, was rolled out across Moscow in one of the central regions or uh, uh, districts of Moscow. And you work on improving the lives of uh, citizens in the cities. Now the question is to you. Uh, Many live in huge urban centers. How do you think AI will improve and change the life of uh, someone living in the urban area? Alexander, we do not hear you. Unfortunately, there's no sound. Yeah, I'm sorry for that. Yeah, great. Annapolis is a young university. In two days, uh, we will mark a 10 year anniversary, but well, we know we still um, receive uh, the um, con congrats. Now we're working on uh, the uh, environment uh, in the urban centers and how uh, people are going to live there. Our project is focused on the uh, environmental monitoring using AI. For instance, uh, l looking at the construction of the unauthorized buildings within an urban center or uh, looking at the cars parked uh, at, the, uh, uh, at, the, at the lawns. We also use sat-nav images and uh, uh, scans and photographs and scan it with the AI. We have uh, the no knowledge uh, about uh, the transportation flows uh, and we use this knowledge uh, for, to feed the AI and uh, the classical areas uh, is uh, the uh, that we focus on is the driverless transport within urban centers and around them 
Uh, there are taxi drivers who sometimes, and uh, truck drivers who work for more than 18 hours per day, and obviously that's not safe. Uh, the driverless technology will help to improve the safety uh, and uh, uh, the, uh, um, uh, the, the the traffic uh, load uh, of the transportation system. It will help to decrease the number of incidents, uh, accidents, and improve uh, the safety as well as the environment. Another interesting example for a non-typical use of uh, AI in an urban setting, we have this project where we have developed an assistant for taking exams in, in, in driving. Exams for your knowledge of, uh, of uh, driving rules and regulations. This is also a tool for a setting uh, for assessing the traffic on the road. So we we have this uh, simulation of uh, of a car where we are driving a car, and uh, the system can do the controlling. It's also a tool for recognizing the faces of of the people who are taking exams because. Uh, Sometimes uh, some people ask someone else to take an exam for them. We are in the middle of uh, certifying this tool and uh, we hope that very soon we'll be able to roll it out and uh, more people will access uh, the functionality of taking an exam with this AI-based tool. The Annapolis University is uh, setting up this new initiative with AERI, the Artificial Intelligence Research Institute. This research will be at the crossroads between uh, neural network technology and quantum physics. Uh, we, we're going to talk more about this project on day two of AI Journey. And um, speaking of new research, last year our university participated in uh, this project challenge, uh, uh, the challenge uh, of uh, developing a solution for CO2 emission reduction. We came second. Uh, we proposed uh, uh, a solution for reducing CO2. And uh, we have been looking for new materials uh, for a new type of uh, battery, lithium-ion batteries. Uh, for using it for somewhat unorthodox purposes. And as for social responsibility, we have been leveraging newest technology to help people with um, increasing their lifespan and with their health care. And also a tool for health and safety at uh, manufacturing facilities where we could do the monitoring of a whole range of aspects that could harm people. This is done to prevent 100% of uh, health and safety incidents. We are moving into the future, whether we like it or not. I hope I have managed to present at least some of the things, the projects and initiatives that we're doing at the university. We have inherited some problems from before, but we hope that we could uh, leverage these tools to solve them. Thank you, Alexander. As for these uh, new materials that you're working on, the materials that uh, do not exist in nature, that, but that, that can be created with AI, this is a, a big topic. We will get back to this topic tomorrow at the big panel session. There are There is a lot of promise in these uh, developments and uh, innovations. and. It is always fascinating when a, a new material is, is created. Uh, graphene, I think, it took around 10 years to develop it, but uh, we know that there are cases where new materials are created in six to eight months. So the acceleration is uh, incredible, it's through the roof, and uh, also healthcare, as you said, could, use, uh, could benefit quite a lot from these tools. Very interesting, fascinating research. We are also happy to be your partner. We're happy to see that uh, Innopolis is this, this platform where a lot of researchers from all across the country can experiment and put the experiments to practice. We have uh, a bit more than 10 minutes left. So, a question to all of you. One minute each. You have each talked about these ambitious goals and projects. That sounds great. But we, we actually have a, a pretty representative um, 
quorum at this at this session. We have uh, people from the government, from the academic community. So maybe we could devise this common project that we could maybe implement within the next one or two years. Uh, so once again, one minute each. Uh, I would ask Alexei to speak last uh, as a minister to maybe sum up this brief discussion. So what do you think these initiatives could be? Let's start once again with uh, Vecislav. What do you think this common project could be of interest to all of us? It's true, it's been a great discussion. I've heard, a lot, I've heard about a lot of great solutions. I think we should adopt a systemic approach. I think we are lacking a database, uh, an AI database of examples of AI use cases in practice. It would be great to have this uh, maybe common line, common database that you could refer to to look up solutions, tools, projects that, that researchers, someone else are working on. I, I think that could be very useful and it, it can be done. It's realistic. We have a lot of teams. Uh, we just need to coordinate the efforts and there you have it. It will be done. Thank you. I've taken that down for further discussions with ministries. Uh, Boris, what do you think? I think uh, there is a very good idea that um, many people throughout the discussion mentioned the promotion of AI, popularization of AI with the younger audience, with students, school students, especially given the relevance of uh, AI challenges uh, and also the fact that this is the decade of uh, tech and innovative development. So, as Alexander said, we should not really count on guaranteed partnership with the Chinese researchers. So, we should probably instead do something on our own, start developing our own initiative, uh, maybe some program on the platform of different universities, uh, creating a network of uh, programs, departments at universities. So I'm, I'm talking about this community that would be promoting AI, that would be developing standards for popularization of AI with students. I think that could be very useful and uh, that would help us retain students in our universities. Thank you, Boris. Great idea. Alexander, what do you think? You are on mute. Oh, my apologies. We all know this, but we rarely speak about this. So I will be the first to say it. Uh, the country is experiencing this huge technological gap, I think. There are classical methods, development methods used across the globe. They are drifting towards artificial intelligence. The models that are based on AI, which do the scoping with classical methods, classical techniques. I think we need cooperation to develop a processing, a production complex in design, in development, because this is where we are lagging behind, I think. The future is uh, not very bright, I'm afraid, in that regard. The means that we've been exporting, that we've been importing from Western countries, uh, from our counterparts abroad, I don't think we could count on those in any time soon. So we need this cooperation, not just to reproduce what we have been doing, but to create something new in, in development and design. We have the, the foundation for that. The the world has been uh, doing this for 20 years and uh, we can truly accelerate. What we need now is cooperation for designing AI, for processing, for industries. I completely agree, Alexander. There is a huge challenge and as we are losing our 
foreign counterparts. This is an increasingly significant challenge that we need to deal with as soon as possible. Mikhail, what would you suggest? My idea perhaps is not as ambitious and large scale as uh, the other panelists said, but this latest generation of neural networks use data sets of uh, up to several petabytes. The data sets come from abroad, they are based on data in English, so for tech sovereignty we need our own data sets of comparable scale. And of course that would necessitate collaboration of universities to create such data sets and that could be a pillar underpinning our digitization national strategy. Thank you. Good idea. A data set is necessary. We have talked to universities about this and uh, to government officials. Uh, the Ministry of Economic Development, of Digital Development, are very much interested in this. And we also see demand for this in the industry. So I think this is a challenge that needs to be dealt with. As soon as possible, without the data sets, we will not make much progress. Eduard, what do you think? I think uh, on the short-term horizon, we could do something with uh, research related to the this northern sea route, logistics, economics of it, liquefied natural gas, transportation. We need technology for uh, these uh, projects, but that would be for the midterm, for the long term. As for the short term, I think uh, the labor market is something that we could improve. A lot of uh, shifts and transformations in the economy, a lot of retraining, professional development. We are one of the operators in uh, the National Demographic uh, Retraining Program. We see that there is no, there are no tools uh, in the country for development of uh, relevant skills for better adjustments to the new labor market. We have been developing a tool like that, so a tool for headhunter, um, for reskilling and readjusting the system of uh, professional development and retraining. I think uh, this is highly pertinent throughout the country and I think this is something that we could do together next year. Thank you, I agree, retraining professional development is a significant challenge and uh, I'm sure that tomorrow we will have to go back to this topic without retraining. The shortage of, challenge, of talent will be especially difficult. Uh, Alexander and then Mr. Minister. I think we need to leverage our new math methods, methods to uh, create the tools and solutions that we were not able to using our traditional methods, uh, creating new materials, as we said. So we, we can indeed leverage AI to solve math problems that are relevant for AI development itself. So we could use AI to develop AI more effectively. I think this is uh, a topic that, that holds much promise. And I think this is something that could give us the benefit of uh, a quantum leap, so to speak, in AI development. Thank you. Agreed. Moving on, Alexei, what do you think should be the next big federal project in this area? And uh, maybe just a quick summary at the end of our discussion. Well, first of all, I wanted to thank everyone for this great panel session. I loved all the ideas. All these ideas really resonate with me. When asked to summarize them, I, I'd have to say that I understand that AI is a, is a mechanism, is a tool, and that there could be two goals that we could pursue. Logistics is one of them. We live in, in the biggest country in the world, and uh, the 
transport of people and goods across the country, it has an impact on everything, on whether we have food to eat, whether we can heat up our flats. And considering the fundamental changes that we've uh, been undergoing this year, these uh, changes in the transportation routes and the logistic routes uh, across the country is very, very relevant. And the other one is, is people. I'm not sure anyone has ever tried this, and I think Zbeh could be the first one to try, and this is where we absolutely need AI. I am talking about analyzing all kinds of aspects of uh, human capital in, in Russia. 42 million pensioners in Russia. How many people are working in the commercial center or in um, state-subsidized institutions? etc., etc. We've been using the impetus of uh, our uh, natural resources, but it's clear that uh, 10 to 20 years from now, this, uh, this energy, this impetus, and the, uh, the potential of uh, the human capital would be would probably be the the only pillars that that could support the development of our country so this is the time for us to analyze the human capital this important pillar that could be one of the vectors for that could define the vector of development of Russia thank you very much uh, mr. Videkin for organizing this great discussion and uh, for all your work in this area thank you Alexei uh, I also thank all the panelists. I hope you have a great day, a great evening, interesting trips. I wish you the best of luck. And once again, I, I just wanted to reiterate that it is interesting and it is useful what you're doing. Spur has been helping you. Other corporations have been helping you. We have all your ideas, all your thoughts written down here. And uh, we would be happy to follow up on all these ideas. And I hope we will accomplish a lot thanks to you. Thank you again. Best of luck. Great day.